It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. It is no secret that I really want to see the remake for King Kong vs. Godzilla. Now, King Kong vs. Godzilla was first out in 1962 underneath Toho Studios and of course Universal for the American Cut. And since then, of course, it has not been as successful as the other Godzilla films. And matter of fact, it's like the highest grossing Godzilla film in Japan as I speak right now. Once you compare the numbers to the other entries in the whole entire franchise. And so, when I first heard the news that there was going to be a remake of that movie, I was like super, super, super excited. Now, normally when I hear news about remakes, I'm like, Oh no, I don't want to see this remake. It looks really, really awful. I will not pay a single dollar to see that freaking remake. However, I think this whole entire concept of a remake for King Kong vs. Godzilla sounds very intriguing because technology has actually improved since then. Now granted, I do like the fact that, of course, like a lot of the Godzilla movies use practical effects, but I think it might benefit from the technology that we actually have nowadays. And so, I was really excited about the news when I heard that it's going to be remade. Now, originally this movie was supposed to come out in November of this year, however, it was delayed thanks to the coronavirus. Also earlier this year, Warner Brothers announced that they're going to have a service that was called HBO Max to have all their movie and all their content into one place, that way people can actually enjoy it. And so naturally, the whole entire project went into limbo until recently I heard about this news. I got something nice this year. The biggest movie premieres in theaters and on HBO Max the exact same day starting in December 25th with Wonder Woman 1984. When Warner Brothers stated that they're going to release every single last movie that they made for the upcoming year, they literally mean every single last movie for the upcoming year, both in the theater and on HBO Max, which also include King Kong vs. Godzilla. And so naturally, I was really excited by the news because I'm worried about the coronavirus, first of all, because the idea of going to a theater, potentially risking my life to just see one movie is really crazy to me. And so to see all the blockbusters into one place is a fantastic strategy. You get, you get money from the theater, you get money from streaming services, and so to me at least, it's a humongous win-win to see it either way for the fans. However, there's come to my attention that basically the whole idea of this concept was not really good for legendary pictures because I heard in the latest news that they might potentially sue Warner Brothers over this decision. Legendary will send legal letters to Warner Brothers to challenge the decision to put Doom and Godzilla vs. Kong on HBO Max. Legendary only has 30 minutes notice before Warner Brothers 2021 HBO Max plan was announced. Now before I share my comments, I first want to state that I am no sort of expert when it comes down to business. I never worked in a film production before. As a matter of fact, the only kind of film productions I've done are amateur works and also YouTube. And so I don't know the business behind everything when it comes down to film studios because I've been working independently because it's not, you know, it's easier to do that, that way than studios. That said, I know for a fact, of course, the strategy that Warner Brothers want to do sounds really good on paper because you will have a movie at the theater, you will have like a movie at like the device for HBO Max, and so naturally since they produce like a large chunk of their movies, they should be able to do whatever they want with their movies, especially during this whole entire coronavirus pandemic. However, there are some movies, of course, like as mentioned in the article, about how legendary pictures produce some of their movies sometimes. We know for a fact that like a lot of the Batman stuff is produced by legendary pictures. A lot of the MonsterVerse stuff is produced by legendary pictures. And so if Warner Brothers wanted to actually put their property onto the service, 
they should have told legendary pitchers beforehand about their plan because I'm pretty sure that the original contract for Warner Brothers and legendary pitchers is to release it into the theaters. You cannot send some sort of letter like 30 minutes after you make the announcement to legendary pictures to release the movies onto the streaming services without their permission. And so naturally, you need to have some sort of new contract to actually allow legendary pictures stuff onto your service. And so it's a really, really bad strategy on Warner Brothers end to not actually announce it towards like legendary pictures. I really hope just really, really hope that Legendary Pictures and Warner Brothers do something to solve this whole entire issue because many fans want to see this movie one way or another. Many fans like me don't want to get the coronavirus. And so the strategy of watching it at home or watching it in the theater is a very good idea. However, besides the point of the legal battle, I'm also kind of concerned about the lack of advertisement for this movie. It's been like a long time since the movie was announced, but I have not seen like a single trailer whatsoever. I have not seen a single sort of advertisement from Warner Brothers N. And so I'm hoping, just hoping, by next year that we get to see some sort of advertisement, some sort of trailer to understand the whole entire concept behind the movie. Of course, we know that Godzilla is going to fight King Kong, but will there be other monsters that's also part of the MonsterVerse? Will there be like some sort of like, you know, different sort of scenario with the characters? I'm kind of curious what kind of characters will also return in this movie and what kind of characters will not actually return. Because in the last movie, from what I've seen so far, it was like some, some hint, like a hint where basically King Ghidorah might actually return back. So I'm not sure if King Ghidorah might actually return back or not. I'm just very curious about this movie, the outcome of the movie, and hopefully there's a way for Legendary Pictures to solve this whole entire issue with Warner Brothers. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.